is homework time. Yes, here we go, lesson 25. Let's start by jotting our name and date down at the top of the page. I'll write my name and you write yours. I'll write today, you write the actual date today, where and when you are in this world. So uh, here we're just going to read the instructions and then we'll get on to the actual activity. So the directions here are, a student used the sieve of Eratosthenes to find all prime numbers less than 100. Okay, so our job now is to create a step-by-step -step set of directions to show how it was completed. And they're giving us a little help. Use the word bank to help guide your thinking as you write the directions. Now, they don't want us to use this word bank blindly and just like string these words together and have no idea what we're talking about. So they say, hey, some words may be used just once, more than once, or not at all. In other words, don't just like put these all together in order and, and call that job done. Um, so uh, we really have to think here. I do want to point out that sieve is pronounced sieve like this, sieve rhymes with give, and era toss. So the the accent is on toss, eratosthenes, eratosthenes, um, error toss the knees. Will that help you? Eratosthenes, eratosthenes. Okay, so it's the knees. Eratosthenes, the sieve of Eratosthenes. Not that it matters that you pronounce that correctly, but hey, makes you look cool. All right, so let's go on to the actual activity now. And well, here it is. Here's the sieve of Eratosthenes, and as you see, a student has gone through and done some Xing out, some circling, um, some shading. So where would you start if you were doing this? Well, the number one seems like a reliable place. So direction number one is to deal with the number one. Now, the, and remember, our purpose here is to determine all the prime numbers up to 100. Okay, that's what we're trying to find. Now, one is, by definition, a unit. It is neither prime nor composite. That's why it's shaded in red. So our first direction is to shade in red the number one as it is neither prime nor composite. So that just takes it right out of the calculations here. So, okay, so then number two. Uh, what they did was they circled then two, right? You deal with the number two. So circle the number two, it's prime. Circle two. I'm actually going to write its prime. And I could explain that, but I won't bother because it's only factors are one in itself. And then you can see what they did with two is they said, okay, let's cross out or X out. And you see they give us both that cross out and X here in the word bank. Um, all the multiples of two. Okay. Cross out, or I could have written X out. Cross out all the multiples of 2, because if it's a multiple of 2, that means it has 1 in itself as factors, but also at least 2. So take 4, for example, 1 times 4, 2 times 2, its factors are 1, 2, 4, its composite. Look at 6. 1, 2, 3, and 6. It has more factors than 1 in itself. It's composite. And on for the rest of the even numbers. So all the multiples of 2, all the even numbers uh, after 2 are composite. 
And then they basically continued in this way, right? Circle the next number, it's prime. Cross out all its multiples. Go back to the beginning. Circle the number, the next number that's not already crossed out, it's prime. Cross out all of its multiples, then all the multiples of 5. Circle the next number that's not crossed out, 7. X out all of its multiples, they're composite, okay? So continue going back to the start. Circling the next number and why? As prime and what else do they do? Right. Xing out all of its multiples. And when do you stop? Well, until the table and we can say is filled or is complete. I'll say is filled, meaning every number has been dealt with, either circled and then uh, I suppose the, the last thing they did here, because everything that's X'd out has been shaded in orange, and that's just to visually help you differentiate prime from composite. So uh, kind of an unnecessary step there, but it helps visually. Shade in the X'd out numbers and y as composite. And everything else we know is prime. Everything that's circled and not shaded in. Those are the prime numbers up to 100. All right, well, those seem like adequate instructions. Is that exactly what you need to write? Is that the one correct answer? No, you could go about this in other ways, but that's basically uh, what you did in class, and also how this one was done. I think there's more, though. We're not done yet. Hmm. Let's see what's next. And in numbers 2 and 3, we have questions about what we just did. So what do all the numbers that are crossed out have in common? Well, the numbers we crossed out were all the multiples of those prime numbers. So the crossed out numbers... So they're all multiples of the prime numbers. Now that's not enough though. Okay, that's true. They do have that in common. They're all multiples of the prime numbers. But what is it they truly have in common? The cross set numbers are all multiples of the prime numbers and are therefore, ooh, big word, therefore, all composite. So remember, you're crossing out those multiples because they are composite. All right, so what do all the circled numbers then have in common? The circled numbers... Well, this one is just going to be kind of simple, right? The circle numbers, why did we circle them? They're all prime, right? Are all prime. I don't know what else we could really say about that. We could define prime and say that they only have one in themselves as 
factors, but that's the definition of prime. So it's adequate to say they are all prime. That's what they have in common. All right, that's two and three. Psh. That was kind of quick. Maybe we should just like kill some time here. Make it look like we're working harder than we really are. All right, enough of that. And it's kind of a light night for homework. We're already on the last one. Number four just asks us simply, there's one number that is neither crossed out nor circled. Why is it treated differently? And of course, that was the number one. We did not circle it as prime. We did not cross it out as composite. Um, why is it treated differently? And here's part of the answer I copied onto here. I, you know, I went to the great god Google and said, tell me, define the word prime in math terms, define prime math. And here it is, the math term definition. Prime number. A prime number is a number larger than one that can only be divided even by itself in one. So by definition, it is neither prime nor composite. Um, that is kind of the authoritative answer on one. Okay, so the number one I'll make the fancy one, is by definition, and I realize fourth graders don't write this way, so you can put this, you know, I know they say in your own words, but, you know, think about it, digest it, look away from what I'm writing, and write it yourself based on your understanding, is by definition neither prime nor composite. And you could go on um, that it's, it's called a unit as opposed to prime or composite. It's a unit. It is the unit. It is one. Um, and it appears, you could even explain, well, it appears to be prime because it's only factors seem to be one in itself, but it's one in one. So the other prime numbers all have two factors, one and itself, but one has really one factor. If you were to list the factors of one, it would be one. And so that doesn't really fit the definition of what a prime number is, that it's right there. You see the second part, even ignoring the larger than one, can only uh, be divided evenly by itself and one, well, because it's one in the same with one, that it has one factor, not two, like all the other prime numbers. So in this sense, it's different from all prime numbers. Uh, so we could even go, on, let's go ahead and see, we could say one is different from the prime numbers, I could just say prime numbers, because it has one factor, which is, I'll put in parentheses here, one, <laughs> comma, not two. It's also different from composite numbers And how many factors do all composite numbers have? Well, they have at least three. So take the number four as the first composite number, one, two, and four, right? And that's the, the fewest factors a composite number can have, like nine has one, three, and nine. 25 has uh, one, five, and 25. Um, so it's also different from composite numbers, which have three, or more 
factors. See, so it doesn't really fit the definition and the qualities and characteristics of a prime number and definitely doesn't for uh, composite numbers either. If you can write something along those lines and understand what you're writing, it's important not just to like copy what I wrote, I mean, but to really think about and understand it, then you will understand prime and composite and you'll be able to say with me, this homework time is complete. So I'll see you again next time. It is once again, homework time. Yeah.